There are conflicting statements in reference to who handed the gun to Mr. Baldwin. But at this point in the investigation, I think it's clear to the investigator, and that was uh, Mr. Hulls, in the statements from Mr. Hulls that he did, did not recall handling, handing the weapon or he did not hand the weapon to Mr. Baldwin. Independent witnesses state that he, that he did. So there's a discrepancy there. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Did Dave Hall's hand Alec Baldwin the gun? It seems a simple enough question. The Santa Fe Sheriff has also made a fairly simple statement saying protocol had to have been broken. Post meditation is a true crime rocket science ism. It's a valuable tool for determining the golden thread running through a particular case, including the premeditation phase as well as some aspects of the incident itself. I don't think there was criminal premeditation in this case, but that doesn't mean there isn't a useful mirror provided by post-meditation to test things like complacency, urgency and standards, for example, in terms of actions and determinations. In this episode, we're going to look at the aftermath, the immediate aftermath, where Assistant Director Dave Halls finds the weapon and then conveys it to the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed. But before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. So in terms of post-meditation, we're going to an article. I'll put a link to that in the description from pbs.org. This is a quote from that article. In the commotion after the shooting, Halls found the weapon a black revolver manufactured by an Italian company that specializes in 19th century reproductions on a church pew. Now, if you read that without that section in the middle, Halls found the weapon on a church pew. He brought it to Gutierrez Reed and told her to open it so he could see what was inside. There were at least four dummy bullet casings with a small hole in the side, he told detectives. But there was one casing... It had no hole, end quote. Now, interestingly, Holtz denies handing the firearm to Baldwin, but Baldwin, when prompted by the host, said, I'm handed a gun, and someone declares, they said, this is a cold gun. Dave Halls? Oh, the, 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 the first AD. So there you hear Baldwin acknowledging that it's the first AD. He doesn't say, yes, Dave Halls, right? But the first assistant director is Dave Halls. There were many witnesses in the church, 16 I believe, and apparently they said they saw Halls hand Baldwin the gun. But to add more complexity to the tale, some say it was actually Hannah Gutierrez Reed and not Halls who shouted, cold gun. Now let's go to the LA Times, quote, Halls told investigators that his typical onset safety protocol included him checking the gun barrel for obstructions before Gutierrez Reed opens the hatch of the weapons and spins its drum, the cylindrical rotating part of the gun that holds the rounds. On the day of the incident, Halls told the detective he thought he saw three rounds and acknowledged that he should have checked all of them, but didn't. He also did not remember if Gutierrez Reed had spun the weapons drum. According to an earlier affidavit filed by the sheriff's office, Halls allegedly held cold gun, meaning the weapon was not loaded as he was handing it to Baldwin. But the crew member remembers Gutierrez Reed as being the one to have pronounced the gun cold. And that's the end of the quoted section. I think besides these contradictions, let's now apply post-meditation to the statement cited by PBS. Remember this part in it. In the commotion after the shooting, Halls found the weapon on a church pew, right? That's the part we want to focus on. That becomes a question. Was there a commotion before the shooting, during lunch? And who found the weapon and checked it? From what we know, Sarah Zachary retrieved it from the safe and Hannah cleaned a chamber before adding a sixth and final round. The question is, did Halls directly check the firearm before the shooting with the same degree of focus and urgency as he did after? 
The other thing to note is who left the weapon on the church pew? If it was Baldwin, did he not hand it to anyone or show it to anyone or give it to anyone? The armorer, the person in charge of safety. Think about a scenario where there was more than one live round in the long-barreled Colt 45 revolver. And in the commotion of crew scrambling to get out of the church or medics scrambling to get in, or the effort to make the two injured victims comfortable on the ground inside the church, the pews were moved and the gun knocked to the ground. You could have had an additional quote-unquote accidental discharge. Then going back to that PBS article, quote, He brought it to Gitteres Reed and told her to open it so he could see what was inside. There were at least four dummy bullet casings with a small hole in the side, he told detectives. There was only one empty casing. It had no hole. From this description, it appears both Hannah and Halls figured out almost immediately that a live round had been in the 45. Did neither Hannah nor Halls mention this to Baldwin in the 30 to 40 minutes it took for the helicopter to arrive on set and airlift Helena to hospital? If this is Hall sitting beside Baldwin, didn't he think to mention this important point he knew about? And that brings us to the next section, complacency on set. According to the LA Times, quote, Authorities only confirmed on Wednesday morning that the round that fatally wounded Hutchins and also injured Sousa was in fact a lead bullet. But the crew member, who was standing about a dozen feet away, said it was immediately clear to them in the aftermath of the shooting. In other words, it was immediately clear that a bullet had been fired. There's no way it was anything but a bullet that did this kind of damage, the individual said, recalling how Hutchins immediately dropped like a sack. I was looking right at her. I could see an exit wound that immediately started pouring blood. The individual did not immediately realize that Sousa had also been shot. The person described the thought of having a live round on set as so far off the realm of what's wrong and bad. In this business, if you get caught on a location or a set with a single live ammunition round on a set that they're doing guns and they have armorers, you're fired immediately. End quote. Hannah Halls and this anonymous crew member all seemed to know immediately what had happened. And yet Baldwin told ABC News early in December that no one suspected a live round. She goes down. I thought to myself, did she faint? The notion that there was a live round in that gun did not dawn on me till probably 45 minutes to an hour later. But nobody told you what happened? No, no. Did it, you was, know it wasn't until I was in the police station. Hours later, I mean, it was like seeing aliens. It was, it was utter disbelief over the idea. It was unacceptable, the idea that it was a live round. And finally, one of the police officers, at the conclusion of my interview, I was there for like an hour and a half or so, she takes her phone and she slides it across to me. She says, that's what came out of Joel's shoulder, a 45 caliber slug. If you compare Baldwin going on to ABC months before the police investigation is concluded, because he can't wait, could he really wait hours and hours to be told, without asking, what had happened? Why was he the last to know when so many others seemed to know immediately? So I'm not going to take it further than that, but what I do want to do, I know I've been talking about it for a while, is I'm going to be dealing with those three questions um, fielded by ABC on the deadly take, and I'm going to provide the true crime rocket science answers based on what we know thus far. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.